the BCS Championship. Woo! What a controversial era was the BCS era. It really was controversial. Now, a lot of fans are probably happy now that we're getting a playoff system. I think the playoff system started to really get a lot of clamor after the 2005 uh, championship game between USC and Texas because USC and Texas were the two best teams to face off at that time. But then afterwards, we would get years and years and years where the team that shouldn't be there got in there, and it was just like, you know, a bunch of boring games. And then small schools like Boise State and TCU, well, they're not technically small schools, but they're not known as the national powers as a Michigan or an Ohio State. Those small schools started to rise, and they would beat teams like in Oklahoma, and they would beat teams that had a well-known resume. And a lot of people were saying, boy, what if there was a playoffs? What if there was a playoffs for this? And the playoff talks started to get more and more later in the BCS era. And honestly, the BCS era, if you're an SEC fan, you loved it because the SEC dominated. There's no denying it. The SEC dominated throughout most of the BCS. So us SEC fans, and I'm one of them, Roll Tide, Alabama. We, we love the BCS era. But besides winning the national championships, I do agree that it's flawed. And I'm glad that they're bringing the playoff system. And I cannot wait to see the playoffs because I think it will be more interesting. Makes the conference rivalries a little bit more intense. Makes games a little bit more intense. And finally, some teams can finally lose games without people going, They lost this one game. It's over for them. Because it will be more interesting with the playoffs. I cannot wait till next season. But right now we have the national championship game. Which it's kind of a shame that this game is not getting a lot of media hype or attention. I remember last year when Alabama and Notre Dame was playing. And, and let me just say this. Like I said, I'm a Bama fan. I gave Notre Dame no fucking shot against Alabama. I, I think I was like, when I was writing articles and stuff, I was trying to be as unbiased as popular as possible. And I said, oh, Notre Dame will keep this game close. But in reality, I wanted to write, Alabama's going to run all over Notre Dame. And that's what they did. And the media and everything. I remember ESPN, they were at the fucking Miami. They were in Miami going to the game. And Colin Cowherd did a show at Miami. Mike and Mike did a show at Miami. Whereas Take had their show at Miami. They had their show in Miami. And they were just like, you know, set up, getting excited for Alabama, Notre Dame. And I said to myself, wait, why aren't these guys, why aren't all these media networks at Pasadena? I mean, California, if you look at the weather, you guys can see there, there's some damn sunshine. The weather's really beautiful in California. Don't let this long sleeve fool you. I only wore this long sleeve because it's a nice shirt to wear on camera. But it's nice weather. Why aren't these people out here talking about Florida State and Auburn? To me, I felt this game got pushed under the rug, and I feel a lot of people, it's just because it's not the matchup everyone wants to see. And I'm not trying to disregard Florida State. I'm not trying to disregard Auburn. But I don't think a lot of people nationally are just super excited because Auburn is not a hateable SEC team. Let's just put it out there. I'm an Alabama fan. I hate Auburn by default. But besides me being an Alabama fan, what is there to hate about Auburn this year? What is there to hate about Auburn for all the SEC haters besides that they're in the SEC? There's nothing you can really hate about Auburn if you are an SEC hater. Auburn? Went under the radar. Most of the SEC teams gets overhyped, overblown by the media. Hell, if Florida State was facing Alabama, this would get a bunch of media coverage. A bunch of people would be over there because a lot of people want to see Alabama fail. But the fact that Alabama failed in like against Auburn in the Iron Bowl, you know, that was the Alabama haters. That was the SEC haters' reward, and it was all because of an SEC team in Auburn. So. If anything, Auburn looks more like heroes, even though being in the SEC, that is hated by most people in this world. And the thing about Auburn is, as much as I do hate them, but as I do these videos, I try to do them as unbiased as, pop as possible, which is really hard for me at times. But Auburn has flown underneath the fucking radar this whole season. Now, I remember I was telling people when they would ask me, you know, Chase, what do you think about the Alabama-Auburn game? I said, I think it's going to be a lot closer than what people think it will be. That's what I was saying the whole time. Because unlike most people, I watch a ton of college football. I love college football. I love it mainly because I get to see the prospects that might go into the NFL one day. And I like talking about the NFL draft. I love me some college football. 
And Auburn has flown underneath the radar this whole season. I mean, this team is good. It's not a bad team. I mean, Auburn made some smart decisions when they decided to bring Gus Manzal from Arkansas State, who was an offensive coordinator on the national championship team with Cam Newton. They decided to bring this man, be their head coach, and he put it in a system that works for the players, got a quarterback that is not as great as Cam Newton, but a guy that can run a Gus Manzal offense. He has running backs. Trey Mason was already a good running back. It wasn't like he – he was good last year. Trey Mason was good last year. Didn't like he was suck. Auburn had a great linebacking core. I mean, they're not great in coverage, but they had a great linebacking core. They still had some pieces on that team. I didn't think they were going to be this freaking good, but they have flown underneath the radar, and that's because, you know, all the other SEC teams were being talked about more than Auburn. LSU was being talked more about Auburn. Johnny Manziel and Texas A&M were being talked about more than Auburn this year. Hell, even Jadavion Clowney in South Carolina was being talked about more than Auburn this year. Georgia, after they lost to Clemson, they lost the opener to Clemson, still had a better shot at making the BCS title than Auburn. And we can't forget about Alabama. Alabama was being talked about against Auburn. And Auburn... They beat Georgia. They beat Alabama. They beat Texas A&M. Yeah, they had that one slip up against LSU, but that was early in the season. And it was at LSU. Hard to play in Death Valley. They had that one slip up against LSU. And it, after that one loss to LSU, it was like no one was talking about them. Auburn was always a good team. And I feel a lot of people don't give Auburn too much credit. This is coming from an Alabama fan. I hate these motherfuckers. I hope they lose tonight. But they should deserve a lot more credit than what a lot of people are saying. Yeah, lucky plays here. That Georgia player probably should have batted the ball down. And Nick Saban should have probably just said, Oh, fuck it. Let's just send the game to overtime. But shit happens in football. It does. Luck is a part of football. That is just the bottom line. And Auburn earned their way into the national championship. Now, when I look at the Florida State Seminoles, Florida State, at the start of the season, was very, 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 very under the radar. A lot of people said, oh, Florida State's highly ranked. They had a great recruiting class coming in. Yeah, that's Florida State. You know, they're going to be decent this season. A lot of people probably expected them to win, what, 10 games, maybe even nine, make a major bowl game like a like an Orange Bowl or whatever. Yeah, why not? Florida State looked like a good, good team. They didn't look like an impressive team, but they looked like a solid team on paper. And... Jameis Winston has that one Monday night game and just shocks the whole world. Florida State just keeps going and going, blowing out teams, you know, just looking impressive against teams like Clemson. And Clemson, that game was supposed to be the ACC game of the century. That was supposed to be the big game for the a ACC, showing the ACC, hey, we're fucking back in the picture. The ACC is back, baby. And Florida State embarrasses Clemson. Look at Miami, the university, the U. Miami was playing some of its best football heading into that Florida State game. That game had so much hype. I was excited for that game because I actually felt Miami was a very big sleeper team in the ACC this year. I said Miami is going to be a team to watch out for in the ACC. And Florida State ends up embarrassing Miami. And I don't even think, I think Miami this whole time, Ever since they went on that into that losing streak, I really felt Miami still has not got over the loss of Florida State. I really felt that they have felt, you know, that they they were just so shocked that they lost that game. It was a close game going into halftime, and then a weird call by Duke Johnson. You know, that weird referee call. If you guys remember watching the game, Duke Johnson looked like he broke a tackle and he was going to run for a touchdown, but the referee blow to play dead, even though no one heard a whistle. Ever since then, Miami just plummeted. But Miami was good when Florida State played them. And Florida State has just looked nothing but impressive. Now, I know a lot of people go, well, they have had a cupcake schedule. And I don't think this is going to be a game where Florida State just blows out Auburn. I don't think it's going to be that type of game. I actually see this game being a lot closer. And in all honesty, the X factor of this game is Trey Mason. I said that Missouri was going to beat Auburn, because I felt Missouri was very underrated, just like Auburn. 
Missouri was very underrated this year. No one was fucking talking about them. But I thought Missouri would have a chance against Auburn because their defense was really good. Yet Missouri could not read the keys of the option that they are that they were running. Both teams have had three to four weeks to prepare for each other. I don't think Florida State's offense is going to be as dynamic as what people are expecting because Auburn probably has that on lockdown. Gus Manzal, even though he's known as an offensive guy, I really think that he has emphasized his defense saying, hey, keep us in the game so we can keep running the football. We all know Auburn loves running the football, but if they're down by 30, I would not be saying, hey, let's keep running this option. And you do not want to force Nick Marshall passing the football. Nick Marshall is not a great passer. He's a great runner, great athlete, no doubt about it. But he ain't someone that I would trust in the pocket to pass me a game winner. Yeah, I know. Miracle of prayer hair. Like I said, if the Georgia player just knocked that shit down, it'd be game over for Auburn. And that's not and that's something you cannot deny. But overall though, Florida State, I think, is an overall better team talent wise. I think the receivers like Kelvin Benjamin are really, really good. I think that the defense of Florida State will be shocked a little bit early in this game. They'll be shocked by the plays that Auburn is running. They'll kind of get tricked a little bit. I think that Auburn and Florida State will make competitive at halftime. It'll be a very competitive game, 20-14. to 14. Bill Florida State will say, hey, we have to make some uh, halftime adjustments. Auburn will never, ever be getting blown out in this game, but I don't think they will ever lead this game. I think Florida State will hold on to this game. I see Jameis Winston making a couple mistakes in this game. He has made some crucial interceptions in past games. But good thing for him is that his defense can make up for his mistakes. But overall, I do think Florida State will beat Auburn in a very, very close game and hopefully an entertaining game. Yeah, I know I didn't talk about Jameis Winston in that whole sex scandal, but that's in the past. I don't really care about it. But overall, I say Florida State wins this game. I could see Auburn pulling off the upset, if, if you can call it that, because I don't really view it as an upset. I view these teams pretty damn equal. But I can see Auburn winning this game. I know a lot of people will be like, this is you being biased, because like you said earlier in the video, you hate Auburn. But I've been saying this whole time. Auburn is a pretty damn good team. They're not a team to sleep on. I'm not sleeping on Auburn. If I was sleeping on Auburn, this video, I would have told you Florida State's going to kill them. But I think it's going to be a lot closer than what a lot of people are expecting. I see it being a pretty entertaining game, but not one that we're going to remember down the line, like a USC versus Texas or a Miami versus Ohio State. More as a game where it's just like, okay, enjoy. Here's a football game. That's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this predictions. If you guys like WWE wrestling, I'm going to be reviewing Monday Night Raw later tonight. Uh, so... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Who you guys got in the national championship game? Do you got the oh, Florida State Seminoles? Or do you have the, oh, God, I can't believe I'm going to say this, War Eagle Auburn Tigers? <clears throat> can't believe I fucking said that on camera. Anyways, guys, enjoy the BCS national championship game. And stay, stay around for Monday Night Raw later on tonight. Peace.